Well, it's like Frankenstein's monster, because they do get stinky. They get stinky. Or you just wrap yourself in glad wrap, but a little bit of a hodgepodging it together, you should be fine. G'day everyone, and welcome back to another Catch Up With Kiralee. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kiralee, and on this channel, Kiralee Cosplay, we talk about all things that is cosplay, sewing, and costume related. A fortnight ago, I posted this video that was all about cosplay hacks, and you guys loved it. So I thought that I would make a follow-up one, a part two, if you will, with all of your comments that were absolutely amazing, plus a few that I remembered that I didn't include in the first one, also some from Instagram, and I took a few from my friend Cora Berry over on TikTok, with her permission, of course. So without further ado, here are 10 more cosplay hacks. Cosplay hack number one, brought to you by Cora Berry and also Binksy, when you were doing twin tails or piggy tails or pony tails and you wanted to stop from tangling up, think about adding a tube of fabric. Creating thin tubes of fabric where the ponytail or piggy tail goes through will help the, the hair not tangle up. Now it's best to create these types of tubes from similar color fabric that is somewhat sheer. So we're talking about fabrics like organza, also netting, or power mesh, power mesh is very, very good, or even chiffon. This will help your piggy tail or ponytail or twin tails, whatever you want to call them, hang nicely, look fabulous in photographs, and you know, just in terms of upkeep, make it so much easier to work with. Now, I will say that some people do the netting all the way down to the bottom so that everything is encased, and other people do just the uh, tube right down to about halfway down. It's completely up to you. It depends on what the style and the aesthetic is that you're going for, but at least encompassing a fair bit of the tail will really, really help. Tip number two, and this is from Grace M, and I have used this one, don't be afraid to Frankenstein your patterns. So what does Frankenstein in your patterns mean? Well, it's like Frankenstein's monster. You take all different pattern pieces and then put them together. This is a fantastic hack, especially if you are just getting into cosplay. You may like the shape of one bodice, but the sleeve of another one is better for it. And then there's another pattern that has the perfect skirt put all three of them together. It doesn't matter that they could be different brands. It might not necessarily be that they are, you know, absolutely perfect with each other, but a little bit of a hodgepodging it together, you should be fine. I can't think of a single cosplay where I've used a pattern that I have used only one said pattern. Usually I will use anywhere between three to about six, I think. And that's if I am actually using a pattern at all at this stage. The only thing that I would make a mention of with Frankensteining patterns is make sure that your lines are matching up. So if the bodice of your pattern has the sleeve starting here, you know, where the normal sleeve is, make sure Sure you find a sleeve pattern that is coming off a bodice that has the same kind of seam line of where they finish. There's no point ha putting in a sleeve pattern that has, you know, the bodice finishes here but the sleeve pattern actually is set back up here, unless you make alterations of course. This is really, really important also if you're looking at dropped waist bodices and if you're attaching any kind of skirt or pants to that. You know, just, just be aware that you need to account for the different placements of where these lines are. Funnily enough though, most of the time the waist is marked, the shoulder seams are usually always in the same place. So as a general rule, you should be fine. I'm going to add on to Grace's hack by also saying that if you need to have your own pattern created because it's just a ridiculous kind of looking cosplay like may that bodice mm -mm, mm -mm. okay how i did that was i created a full body kind of from the neck down kind of uh mock-up with all different seam placements and everything like that it was based off a pattern that was like high neck and i just put the zipper in the back and I tailored it down so that it fit my body really, really nicely. And then I drew all over it. And then that was essentially like my mock-up. It's very similar to if you had 
you know, you had a mannequin or you just wrapped yourself in glad wrap and then duct taped yourself and then made a duct tape pattern. I did exactly the same thing, but with fabric instead. So you can also do that as well. Just don't forget to add seam allowance. Tip number three from Marcella Wright, and that is make your cosplays bathroom friendly. I'm going to add on to that and say also make your cosplays food eating and water drinking friendly as well. Maybe even phone holding friendly and also make it friendly for you to be able to sit down in. I know this sounds absurd, but we have all been there, I'm pretty sure, where we have not thought it through and we have made cosplays that we can't do one of those actions because we were so wrapped up in making the cosplay absolutely perfect that we forgot that we have bodily needs and we need to sometimes use the bathroom or we need to drink or we need to eat so make sure that for example if you are in a full onesie you have access to be able to take it off somewhat easily if you don't have a friend, shall we say, who is willing to stand in the bathroom with you and unzip you. Uh, yeah, just to make sure that you take that all into account. If you are wearing cosplays that are fully, like, gloved up and you can't easily take the gloves off, Maybe consider making a zip in at least one of your pop, one of the gloves so that you can take your hand out. Cora Berry actually did this with her Sailor Moon. I will give her props to that. I saw that and I was like, smart. Tip number four from Kamori no Hime Cosplay and that is add snaps to delicate embellishments or foam decorations that go onto fabric. This is such a good hack because you should always be washing your cosplays if at all possible, because they do get stinky. They get stinky. So when you have these cosplays that are just amazing, they've got beautiful trim, they've got beautiful decorations, they've got armor pieces or like, you know, gems that go on to the cosplay. We sometimes just glue them on and not think about it. But the truth is, if you want this cosplay to last and you don't want it it to smell like Satan's armpit, then really think about putting them on snaps rather than gluing them on because of the fact that you should be able to take those off and hand wash your cosplay delicately. I would never recommend putting a cosplay into a washing machine unless it's on a delicate cycle and your cosplay, you are you are very very confident that your cosplay is going to be absolutely fine i don't know i'm just paranoid that something terrible will happen when my cosplays are in the wash i always always hand wash my cosplays everything else all my normal clothes i'm just like yeet into the laundry into the washing machine i don't care but my cosplays no 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 joking around there but getting back to the hack, this is absolutely fabulous for ensuring that your cosplay stay clean whilst also not destroying any of those beautiful details that you put so much hard work into. Tip number five from Cherry Havoc, and that is for items that you're going to use a lot of, consider buying in bulk online rather than in shops. This is such a good tip and one that I definitely use. Things that you're going to use a lot of and can be used for multiple projects. Things like boning or ribbon or, you know, cross-grown ribbon for, you know, all of the wonderful crinoline pieces, uh, bias binding, or so hook and eyes, press studs, whatever those little bits of pieces that you use lots of that you don't even think about using, Buy it online, buy it in bulk. It is going to work out so much cheaper. Also, now that I think about it, safety pins. Buy safety pins in bulk and online. So much cheaper than buying the little packets. Oh yes, and sorry, when I say press studs, that's Australian terminology for snaps. Tip number six, and this one is from Cora Berry, and that is when dealing with headwear, think a little bit outside the box. So what this tip relates to is things like hats, to stop it from falling off your head, consider putting elastic into the back of it. Also for headbands, 
because anime sometimes have headbands that do not make sense and they stop here, consider using a headband with the rest of the colour being the same colour as your wig. Now I'm also going to jump on in here with my own hack as well and that is if you've got like little fascinators or little hats or something like that consider maybe putting crocodile clips or something like that into it so you can slip it into the head. Don't use bobby pins, they will not work. <laughs> Trust me, they will not work for like long wearing but crocodile clips are very very good. Otherwise, another option is that you can just sew it directly into the wig. If it's like a specialist wig, that you're only going to be using it for this one cosplay. And I always say sew and not glue because of the fact that, well, you may change your mind and you may use that wig in the future for something else and I just, I don't know. Whenever I, whenever I see glue in wigs, I get very, very scared. Tip number seven from moi, and that is use dance tights rather than stockings if at all possible. This is a hack that I learned a couple of years ago and I love it. I find that dance tights are just that little bit thicker, they're a little bit more durable and it just means that everything is smooth on the leg. With stockings they are cheap but they run so easily and there is nothing worse than when you are at the convention, you're looking fantastic, your cosplay has taken a couple of hundred hours to complete and then there's a massive run in your stocking. So I just try to avoid stockings wherever possible. Tip number eight from Coraberry. If you are going to be doing thigh high or even knee high socks, consider sewing them into your stockings or tights. This will ensure that they stay up for the entire convention. Why not just tape them up? Like body tape, that works. It won't. <laughs> it won't, not for the whole cosplay, especially if you have chunky, chunky thighs or chunky legs, it's not going to stay up. Tip number nine from me again, with a sprinkle of Estelle cosplay, if at all possible, make sure you add pockets into your cosplay. And I'm not talking about little pockets, I'm talking about hand size, spread out size pockets so that you can put your phone into your cosplay. You can put money into your cosplay and then you don't need to take a bag. This works really, really well for things like circle skirts with petticoats because they just disappear. It's fabulous. However, the sprinkling of Estelle cosplay that I mentioned is if you can't add pockets, then consider making a matching bag out of the scrap fabric that you have left over from your cosplay. It's a wonderful way to use up that extra fabric and it also means that you have everything matching. It looks good. I did that for my Tudor Yoda. It makes me happy. And tip number 10 from Coraberry again, and that is with wigs, consider adding a darker shade to the roots to give it a little bit more of a natural look. This can be done with markers or with eyeshadow or even a little bit of dye. I will also add to this point and say that if you ever need to do any kind of gradient dye on a wig, like darker color on the bottom especially and then moving up or the opposite way around. A really fantastic way of doing this that's nice and easy. Of course you can use markers, fantastic. It just takes forever but the look perfect. But if you want a nice quick easy way then consider using synthetic dye and plonking that wig in, slowly lifting it up. I did that for my Flora wig and it turned out really, really good. She had this blonde wig with a bit of pink on the end and I tried everything from Copic markers to spraying it with some dye, nothing took. In the end, I had to dunk it into the um, boiling water with dye in it and slowly take it out. Color held perfectly. I will mention that of course this only works from lightest colour going up <laughs> so don't try and dye a, you know a black wig. 
And there you go, those are 10 more cosplay hacks. I hope that you enjoyed that and I want to thank everyone who commented on my last video. If you have any more cosplay hacks that you want to share, please leave them in the comments below. Maybe this will turn into a series. Who knows? I love reading them all. I am even learning some things. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All of that good stuff. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.